Reconnaissance target range may include the target organization clients, employees, operations, network, and systems. Okay? Reconnaissance types. We have passive reconnaissance. Passive reconnaissance is silence. Silence on the wire. You just sit there and you wait for the actual traffic to come for you. Okay? You don't directly interact with the target itself. Searching public records or news releases or just reading or watching the news. That's enough of passive reconnaissance. Many times somebody will, especially if you go to a, like a shareholders meeting for a large corporation and you just listen or you listen to the YouTube video of it and you hear people talk about something that they're doing and you can use that in your reconnaissance and say, oh no, look, they got a partnership with Cisco. I know they're running Cisco. So now you start looking at Cisco vulnerabilities. If you get authorization to attack them, game over. Active reconnaissance, you get tired of waiting. It's like fishing. You sit there and you wait your fishing bait. Does a fish ever come to your bait? Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Active reconnaissance, you just put on your scuba gear, you go under and you spear fish because then you actively recon to find the fish. All right? What we do in networking is we interact with the target directly for any means. We telephone calls to the help desk. We call the technical department. We send traffic into the network to see what it responds. We see if they're filtering set up. We send maybe an email to them and see if they've got a limit or a restriction on the attachments. We might send an email of some form of a test virus just to see if they see it is a virus, right? The ICAR, that's one of the most popular ones to use. All these are part of reconnaissance. So hacking phases continue. We got the pre-attack phase, which is our scanning. This is when we're gonna scan the network for specific information on the basis of information gathered during reconnaissance. Port scanner. Scanning can include use of dialers, port scanners, network mappers, ping tools, vulnerability scanners, etc. Port scanners, we're looking for openings. We're looking for doors or openings into the machine. Then we extract information. Attackers extract information such as live machines, ports, port status, operating system details, device type, system uptime, and other things to launch an attack. More information we gather and the more we get in our pre-attack phase, makes our actual attack phase that much more successful. So hacking phases continued. We're going to look at gaining access. Gaining access, once we scan, we look for a point of access. That refers to the point where we attain access to the operating system or application on the computer or the network. We gain access at the operating system level, application level, or network level. Then we can es escalate our privileges. If we don't have a privilege level access, we have to escalate our privileges to obtain complete control of the system. In this process, intermediate systems that are connected to it are also compromised. This is because once I'm on one system, my relationship on that network changes. So once I get that one compromised, gained access to that system, I'm now in another position of what we call trust or layered network defense, I'm in another layer of their defense. By being in another layer of their defense, I can use that as my perspective to carry out the rest of my attack.